How blessed of God we are this night to have this gracious and glorious privilege to be with my son, Pastor Carlos Jones, too. It has been my blessing to have known him for quite a long time. He and my son are like brothers, and he became my son. I was so moved when he shared with me that God had called him into the gospel ministry. And I was moved further when he determined that the call of God is a call for preparation. And he did all of the things that were necessary in order to prepare for the gospel ministry. And God has blessed him these years as he has been faithful to the call, to the duty that God has placed upon him. <clears throat> I'm here tonight because he asked me to come and because of my love for him and because of my respect for what God in Christ is doing in him, I had to come and share in this time of celebration. 10 years is a long time. Of course, 10 years really can be years of quantity and not quality. But because of his faithfulness, he has made this 10 qualitative years of standing as a gospel preacher of our Lord. And so I just want to come in. I just want to share a word, and I want to share it briefly. As you can see, I'm wrestling with my voice tonight, but I pray God that God will give me enough strength to, to be able to share just a word of reflection out of the word of God. In the book of Acts in chapter number 20, and at verse number 28, these are the words according to the King James rendering. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you the overseer to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. And I want to talk about watching what God is up to. When we look at this passage of scripture tonight, we see it is the movement in the life of the Apostle Paul. He has ministered well. He has gone about establishing churches. He has gone about preaching the word of God, converting and souls and leading young men into the gospel ministry. Time has passed and God is calling him. His time is about to end. He has ministered well. He has made enemies because of his stand in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's on his way now to Rome that he might stand trial before Caesar. But before he goes, he wants to stop one more time and have word with those who ministered with him in the place of Ephesus. It was in Ephesus where he spent over three years. It was in Ephesus where he said, I wrestled with the beast. It was in Ephesus where he preached the word so that individuals came out of darkness into the marvelous light. He's on his way to Rome, but he wants to commune one more time and give some words of wisdom to those who will have the responsibility of carrying the gospel on. And so he stops in Miletus, and as he's there, he sends for the leadership in the church of Ephesus, and they come to him. And when they come to him, he begins to give his spiritual epitaph. He said, you know how I've stood, you know how I've preached, you know how I proclaim the word of God. I've not held back. I've preached Jesus Christ. I've preached him resurrected. 
I preached him sitting at the right hand of the Father and coming back one day, I preached the Christ. And now I must go to Jerusalem and you won't see my face again. But I want to pass by and share with you words of encouragement and help you to appreciate, to keep on moving as God is leading you. And then he gives this, this word, this word, this word. He said, take heed to thyself and unto all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you the overseer. Watch it because Jesus the Christ has bought it and paid for it with his own blood. And when we look at this watch, when we look at this watch, watching God, watching him move, there are some things that I want to point out. And Pastor, I want to say this to you and to all of you who will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are some watches that we must be cognizant of if we are going to be everything that God in Christ wants us to be. I've been standing for over 54 years. And I just want to encourage you to stand strong and to stand tall. And so Paul says that there are some watches. And the first watch is this. Take heed unto thyself, which is the self-watch. The first watch is the self-watch. Take heed to yourself. Watch yourself. Guard your life. Be on guard for how you move through this world. Walk in a way of circumspect. Don't let your life be lost by the rudiments of this world. Keep your wits about you. Stay spiritually strong. Walk in integrity. Walk in decency. Watch yourself. Take heed to yourself. Because the only thing we really have is our reputation. And when we lose our reputation, we lose our power. And so Paul says, whatever you do, take heed to yourself. When we look at our world today and we see pulpits across our nation, one of the things that is so tragic is that we see so many individuals who stand with a word without a life. Don't let your life condemn your word. Make sure you stay in touch with God. Keep yourself. That's your first watch. Take heed to thyself. And then he goes on and says something else. He says, not only must you watch yourself, but you must watch the flock of God. He said, take heed to yourself and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer. Not only must you guard your life and watch yourself, but you got to also guard the flock. You got to minister to the flock. That's our calling. Our calling is to the people of God. And we must be real careful that we are not discriminatory in our watching over the flock. I, I remember when I was a young pastor in Louisiana before I moved to Houston, and I had a friend who pastored with me in North Louisiana, and he shared with me a dilemma that was pressing upon his heart. And he said to me, T, I, I have a problem with my congregation. Because there are some folk in the congregation who I know don't love me, who I know don't really want to follow me. I have folk in the congregation who I know really hate me. And it's difficult for me to deal with them as I deal with the other folk who I know love me. I have folk who don't pay monies. They're there every Sunday, but they won't support the church. And it's difficult for me to deal with them because of their lack of support. And I took him to this passage, and I shared with him 
the Lord has laid upon us the responsibility of all the flock over which I've made you overseer. Not those who love us only, but those who will stand against us. Not those who uh, will not support, but those who, who support and not support. Not those who we know are of low estate and don't have the credentials and the wherewithal of some of the others. But God has given us the responsibility of all the flock. That young girl who is looked upon as being a girl of your repute, that young man who might not have the kind of reputation of some of the other young men, but, but all the flock becomes our responsibility. We have to watch ourselves and we have to watch the flock. And then finally he says, take heed to yourself and watch the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer. And so here's our third watch. Our third watch is watching the spirit because of the fact that God has not allowed us to create our own agenda. God has not allowed us and given us privilege to move in our own way. We have the responsibility of following the orders of the Holy Spirit. That's why the old folk used to say, let Jesus lead you and let the Spirit lead you all the way because of the fact that our sagacity, our acumen is too, is too minute. It, 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 it's too shallow to handle the things of the kingdom. We need the Spirit of God to lead us and to guide us and to show us what we must do. And so I close like this. I close like this. He said, take heed to yourself, take heed to the flock, and take heed to the congregation. And why we must do that? Because here is what he says, that I have purchased it with my own blood. The church belongs to Christ. It is precious to him. And because it is precious to him, it must be precious to us. He says, always understand that when you are dealing with the church, you are dealing with that which I have purchased with my own blood. And I don't know about you, but I thank God tonight that God gave Jesus and that Jesus gave his life. I thank God tonight that he went up on that rugged cross. I thank God tonight that he did not come down. I thank God tonight that he died. But early on Sunday mornings, he got up with all power in his hands. And because he lives, we live also. And we have a reason to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the people of God said, Amen. Thank you, Pastor T.R. Williams, for that amazing message. It totally blessed my life. Yeah. We hope it blessed the lives of everybody here who's watching. We can't wait to see you again. Now it's time to go to the website and get your church merch. Definitely. It's there hot we go. fire. <laughs> so go to the website, get your church merch, yourinspirationnow.com. It's waiting for you. It'll be there soon. Do some exploring on the website. Check out our iGroups and also the many ways to give. So you can give by Cash App, Fellowship One Go, and on the website that we just mentioned. So once you get your church merch, you can get your offering on. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. It's been 10 years for Pastor Carlos as he's just been ministering and leading God's people. Absolutely. And he's had a wild ride. It's been amazing. He's grown from it. We've grown from it. Yes. And we're so blessed to have him as our lead pastor. Absolutely. Yes. And Inspiration Church, we've been here three years of it. Three years, wow. guys. September 24th, three years ago, we started Inspiration Church. And it's been a journey, but it's been a great journey. Thank everybody. Thank you, everybody, for being here Everyone. with us for the three years. You know who you are. Yes. <laughs> 
Before we get out of here, I just want to pray for you all. Lord, we just thank you for how great you have been. We know, Lord, that you are the reason that we're here today. And we just thank you for bringing us all together, whether it's online, face to face or wherever you may be. We just want to thank you, God, for your goodness, your grace, your mercy and your love. In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Now, before you guys go, always remember to love, live and, and lead. lead.